This week's listener of the week is Sam Ropart. Sam, thank you so much for leaving us a five-star review. And for those of you listening, if you leave us a five-star review below, you might be next week's listener of the week. 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 This week on Commercial Real Estate Secrets, we have Mo Regalado. Yes. Mo is the CEO and founder of Movo Media Marketing. Mo, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for having me on the show today. This is a treat because I could just sit and chat with Mo all day long because she's the best. Um, Mo, for the audience, can you tell us a bit about who you are, where you come from, and what you do in Movo Media Marketing. Hi, my name is Mo. Hi, Mo. No, okay, anyway, so (laughs) I'm Mo. I'm with Movo Media Marketing. I do social media for busy commercial real estate professionals. I help them create top of mind awareness and really just want to dominate the world, you know, pinky in the brain. (sighs) Okay. So when did you get started with Movo? I started with Movo in 2012, and actually the V the V O of Movo stands for voiceover because I was in radio, um, and so I did a lot of voiceover work. I've done. You might have heard me on uh, Radio Virgin Dubai, of all places. I know, right? Like I, my voice has been in Australia and China and United Arab Emirates, and I was the voice of Kings Hawaiian and and for a couple of their things. So, wow, it's just, yeah, it's just kind of one of those things. Um, and so voiceover was VO of Movo was meant for that. Uh, I ended up getting, I've always done social media. I had my own brick and mortar location. Um, and <laughs> I started marketing on MySpace, which is so funny. Um, wow. I didn't, I didn't use, uh, I didn't use Facebook cause I wasn't cool. I was an old married lady by that time already. So, uh, it was MySpace. And, um, when I lived in Northwest Minnesota, I got picked up by a um, arts council so I was their media person for the arts council and I started doing their social and their website there and then fully went like went all in in 2017. Wow can you tell me a bit about to you what marketing in commercial real estate looks like because I think it is such a funny thing to watch and as a professional in the field, I'm curious as to your take. Are we talking about corporate marketing or what I think marketing should be? What you think marketing should be. It's all about the relationships, whether you are a corporate brand or you are a personal brand. It should be about the relationships and the community that you're fostering online. Um, I actually just got an email from somebody yesterday and they're like, this person has so many, it's not a person, it's a brand, has so many followers on Instagram and literally their engagement's nothing. Why is this? And I'm like, they're, they're, if you go look at their followers, the followers are legitimate, but the brand itself does not actively engage with their followers. So anybody who leaves a comment, they never comment back. And they don't take the time as a brand to go and foster those relationships with the people that are following them. And that is a big disconnect for all corporate brands. And if you're a little person listening right now, that is a big disconnect for you too, because I see you guys doing it too. Uh, guilty. Uh, <laughs> it's... Um... What's a big, what's a misconception you think people have about posting social media content about commercial real estate online? The, I would say, so I'm actually thinking about this one. Um, biggest misconception is they assume that it's sales. So we have a lot of people in the industry who are old salespeople, right? And I'm talking like sale, sale, sale. Look at what I got here. You know, look what I just sold, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) Who gives a crap? Nobody cares. The only way you're going to get somebody to care about that is if you tell a story behind it. If there was a hard lesson learned in it, um, maybe it's a huge benefit to the person who either bought or sold the property or or it was a leasing assignment that was really tough. Tell the story. Nobody cares about the accolades that you're trying to build up for yourself. They just, they don't care about that. They do care about learning and finding something else 
like say it's something about you that maybe you learned what it boils down to is and this is going to sound so bad <laughs> not like i've ever said anything bad before uh, <laughs> we're basically we've become voyeurs and we want to be involved in your life without actually being involved in your life and the more that you can make us feel like we're a part of that conversation the better it is it's so funny my husband who is my broker partner and i are working on a deal right now and this is we are this is a brutal deal from a to z and i just keep looking at him and i'm like it's okay like there's gonna be a really funny whether it closes or not out of our control but there's gonna be a really good story at the end of this and it will be told because oh my god but uh well, and, and speaking about that, it's also the relationship that you guys are finding as you're working together on this deal. Like, you could totally go in an opposite direction and talk about husband and wives working together. So yeah. my husband and I work together. He does all the back end stuff, stuff I don't give two craps about. Like, that's just my personality. I don't, if I'm not good at it, I'm going to find somebody and bring them onto my team that's going to be good at it because yeah, I, I, it's not worth my time. So he does all the office stuff. He's my operations manager. He does all that. There are times where it's just like, I'm not listening to you. And he's like, but I need you to do this. I'm like, no, but I'm not listening to you. <laughs> and he's like, but you need to do this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's cute. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. How do you think social media has changed marketing in commercial real estate? Well, commercial real estate is far behind residential real estate when it comes to marketing. So there is a huge wide open playing field for anybody who wants to jump in on it. Um, I think what it's gonna make people realize, and I actually just did a video about this this morning, is, and it's a Gary Vaynerchuk thing, so it's not even a me thing, but for years Gary Vaynerchuk said, every company is gonna be a media company. And my whole point was at ICSC, I loved seeing everybody reporting what I call reporting or documenting from the field. They were taking video. They were putting these great videos together, montage clips. You're going to have to start looking at your brokerage business as a media company. That's what it boils down to. A hundred percent. It's so interesting. Um, Gary's talking a lot right now about be not, sale not focusing on sales but focusing on brand mm -hmm. yes you can make the sale and you can gain in the immediate term but if you build a brand you build longevity for your business to gain in perpetuity in the long term mm -hmm. long run um which I find is just really interesting and something I'm trying to wrap my head around right now in commercial real estate, because it's like you said, like this has been a sales, it's a sales and relationship business. Um, but brand has been so neglected in the industry, in my opinion, um, because I don't think stringing together last names and color schemes is branding, but that's just me. But, um, <laughs> It's different. It's 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 different when you have like somebody like BK and we'll talk about Bob here in a bit. But, you know, the no offense CBRE, but uh that's not a brand. That's just a really well known. Well, now it is, but I digress. Anyway. <laughs> you know who's doing a really great job and and they I they do not sponsor me. I do not n none of that stuff. Um who does a really really good job is uh Crexy. I really appreciate Crexy's content a lot. And uh, and it's because they are creating that brand. They're creating a part where you want to see their content. You want to get involved in what they're doing. It has to make you stop the scroll and want to comment. If it's not causing you to do that, then you have to reevaluate what's going on with your brand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> I mean, I have a theory right now that CoStar is only focusing on homes.com and neglecting us poor, sad commercial real estate professionals. And that Craigsy has the opportunity to step in and take that market share. Love the team, love what they're doing. There could be some improvements to the platform, but 
uh, they're working it. And CoStar is, n- n- I don't feel like putting forth the effort. So it's going to be interesting. I think once brands start to realize that they have to connect at a different level, I don't know when that's going to happen. But once they start understanding and that market share gets taken away, um, they're, they're going to see, hey, maybe we should be doing something different. It's not going to be too late at that point. Now we're talking five years down the road when they finally decide to do it. Yeah, it's going to be too late. <sighs> okay. I want to talk to you about the person the who... Person. The person who gets on Instagram and they post for maybe two or three months Mm -hmm. and they don't see immediate results. And so they stop. Can you talk about longevity and posting in marketing, commercial real estate, social media, and what that looks like and the differentiator between posting for a couple weeks or months and posting for a couple, well, for years plus? It's a great question and most people have a short attention span and they want those immediate results and social media is a long game. It really is. If people aren't paying attention to your content, you need to look at your content and see what you're doing. If you have to look at your content and go, am I interested in this or would I pass this by? Then, (laughs) you know, we're going to do bombastic side eye, right? Like maybe maybe you should change up your content um you know so not just instagram but let's talk about linkedin so there was a stat that came out earlier this year that said that 70 percent of all posts that are put on linkedin never receive a like or a comment holy moly so that's seven so like if you're not receiving anything on your your content like Welcome to the club. Like you're, you're with the 70% okay. of the people that post. So don't feel so bad if that's the case. If you want any of the algorithms to pick you up, you need to not post and ghost. You need to actually go and actively engage on OPP. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> uh, you need to go actively engage on other people's posts. The algorithms will pick up that you are active on the platform and then they will reward you for being active on the platform. Um, trust me, I'm, I'm just a, I'm just an algorithm chaser. I'm right there with you. Um, what are, what are some trends you're finding in 2024 that are new and emerging? Mm, That's a great question. And I am actually really loving, and again, it's a Gary Vee thing, what he's been doing, and he's actually been doing this for a while, but it's been more apparent lately where, um, especially on Instagram, they've been doing, um, it's like a, like a carousel. So it's a static image on the very front end with something that makes you stop and then you watch the rest of the video, right? Yeah. I love that. It's not always easy to implement. <laughs> Hello, Instagram. Hello, Meta. If you're listening, we'd really love to have some really nice resources on desktop instead of phone. If I could tell <laughs> you how many client pictures are in my phone versus my kids, it's kind of pathetic at this point. But That's hilarious. They're all older and they have their own phones anyway, so I'll just ask them to send me their selfies. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a really funny point about mobile versus desktop, but mm-hmm. um, alas, I love- our reality... I love green screen. I think it needs to be employed more. Um, I love that. I'm still a big fan of memes. I would love to see more memes in commercial real estate and memes that are funny, not memes that are crappy, just good. And I have a very strange sense of humor. So my funny is different than your funny, but like a good meme is one that makes you sit there and and like either you're going to laugh like immediately or you're going to be like, damn, that was rough. Like, (laughs) woo. If you could only use three platforms in 2024, which ones would they be? Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I have to, I have to live and die by TikTok, but you know, uh, I do jam. I connect more with like, so like my bestie from high school, he and I, that we only, we only send each other messages. They're only memes or reels. Like the more messed up, the better. We know what each other's <laughs> mental health is based on how bad they are. But like that's 
like we don't actually pick up the phone and talk to each other. We're not we're not like that. We're like, hey, are you good? Are you still alive? Are you, are you <laughs> six feet above? Yeah, I'm good. I'm hanging right. Um, I don't have those kinds of relationships on TikTok like I do on Instagram. Sure, sure. It's definitely uh, less personal, more like your yeah. It's it's just less personal on TikTok for sure. But I, I and some people like that. Sometimes I like that. But. <laughs> Get out of my business. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you, you have had a lot. Look, Bob Knackle, the man, the myth and legend who I yeah. didn't even clear to talk about with you or him, but I have a feeling he'd be fine with it. Yeah. Um, I feel like he's been a huge success story uh, in the space since he hopped on, what, at the beginning of 2023? It's January 1, 2023, yeah. Savage. And you <laughs> are the person behind that. Can you tell us what that looked like, how you got him, how you got him to do it, and the results you've seen today? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, BK came through... Uh, Recommendations from both, like, so Rod Santamassimo, the Massimo Group, and Beth Azor. Uh, shout both, out to all yes, of those out. people. They are also my clients. Um, Beth hired me first, so Beth is the OG. And um, they they kept telling him, you need to get on social media. And he's like, I don't, like, I don't know what to do. And they're like, here, here's here's a mo. Go go to mo. And <laughs> he's, like, he's like, what's a mo? Well, that's... <laughs> What's Bob, that? Mo. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> and so we talked, and um, he signed up for three months, just like all my clients do. He's like, I'm going to try it for three months. We're going to check to see what happens. The thing that people have to understand about Bob, what about Bob, um, is the fact that he has 40 years worth of content. So Bob was creating content before people were, like, content was a thing, right? And Bob never threw anything away. So Bob has boxes <laughs> full of stuff that he can pull back and and he remembers what every, you know, what was happening at the time when this publication came out or when this particular piece, right. So it's just he he's just a content machine and he has been. So we put together a strategy and we you fine-tuned it by like month 2 um it was probably a week in and I shared a photo of him standing on the map from the map room and he's in his country house in Connecticut and it got over a hundred thousand impressions on LinkedIn. Damn. And yeah. And at that time I think he only had like 6,500 followers on LinkedIn and I sent both him and Taylor, who's his communications director. I sent him both of them, um, an email and I said, I think we created a monster <laughs> <laughs> and it is just, it is just gone on from there. And the one thing that I tell people about Bob that makes him special and, and really anybody can cultivate this is he's a master storyteller, right? He tells a really damn good story. And, and when you look at his testimonial Tuesday post, it's a it's a deal story it's a success story but he takes you through the process of like this is what was going on this was what they were facing this is how we took care of it and these were their results and here's the testimonial right like it's it's it seems so easy but when it comes down to actually telling that story most people don't have the skills to craft it um, I'm just really lucky that he's great at crafting those stories like I said 40 years this man has tons of content so he's just a dream to work with. I just got to get him to do some more videos. He always tells me, I know I got to do more videos. I know. Okay. For the audience, can you give a three liner as to who BK is and why oh. he's so special? <laughs> Bob Knackle sells buildings in New York City. He has sold 2,332 buildings. 2,330 as of last, but I think when we were in New York, it was 2,332. We just flipped the sign. And he's done over 22 billion in, in sales. And he only represents sellers, he only does exclusives, and he only works in New York City. 
Bob is probably the most legendary commercial real estate broker of all time. He's up there. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely up there. I mean, leveraging social media throws I, him over the top. I would say that yes, because he has people contacting him from all over the world. And not that he didn't before, but now it's like, oh, my friend in Singapore recommended that I follow you. And um, it's just pretty wild how many people he has contacting him. I think the other thing that Crazy. makes Bob so approachable is the fact that he's willing to to share, right? He's willing to share his time. He's willing to share his knowledge and his expertise. He's just a genuine guy. And that's one of the things that I always harp on with all of my clients is you have to be authentic, even though I puke at saying the word authentic because it's overused. <laughs> it is. But if if you are not the same person online as you are in real life, there's going to be a disconnect. And people are going to be off put by that. And, and so, like, for example, I warn everybody before they meet me, I'm a short little Mexican with a foul mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right like like big personality right <laughs> yeah but i don't want you to be surprised when you meet me in real life and be like damn she's obnoxious like i'm already telling you i'm obnoxious so we're just gonna get that out right now <laughs> you're not obnoxious you just have a big personality in a, and in a, a little body <laughs> <laughs> um okay i know you don't like the a word and you ju you did kind of touch on it. Can you talk a little bit more about authenticity and how important it is and the difference between being inauthentic in your social media posts versus being authentic? Hmm. Authenticity is, is going to be different for everybody and it's harder for a professional. But I think when you're willing to say, hey, I screwed up or this is the lesson that I learned, I, I messed this up and I'm willing to come out here and say it versus just showing everything's good, everything's roses, life is great. Um, you know, I think for some people, some of the best posts that they've ever had is when they talk about their struggles because it lets everybody else know, hey, like you're not the only one. And we are so, as, as connected as we are, we are so starved for that connection with another wow. person, right? Like we're so starved to actually feel something that somebody else is going through that we can relate to. Um, and, and so when we do share those things and it can happen in a professional way, mm -hmm. um, it, that, that content from what I've seen just flies. It, it, it grows. It's so huge. It's so interesting. So I, I like to categorize commercial real estate professionals. Um, Am I going to be happy to hear this? Yeah. Yeah. You'll right. You're, you're good. You're on the good side. You're with the good guys. <laughs> you're Batman. Okay. Um, Batman. <laughs> so I have my local community of commercial real estate professionals. And they're not Batman. They hate the internet. They or, or okay. I'm sorry. Let me take that back. They don't hate the internet, but they are anti-social media. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they live behind the big brands and they look down on social media and it's sell, sell, sell. And uh, I oftentimes get looked down upon for my approach, which I find is ironic. But then I met this larger community of commercial real estate professionals nationwide once i started posting online um i started meeting people who have the same job i do and think like me and happen to be really fun cool people and that was this community of commercial real estate professionals it, it doesn't have to be a broker it could be a syndicator or like you a marketing thought leader or somebody like uh, you know, strip mall guy. So, um, I just wanted to take this moment to thank all of the brokers in my market who don't go on social media because you help my business so much. And 
uh, I can literally yell at them from the mountaintops about why they need to, and they won't do it. Nope. Why? No. Why? Because <laughs> they're stuck in their ways. And as of right now, they are under the assumption and belief that they're going to continue to create relationships without really thinking about the fact that as their clientele dies their clientele's children or their clientele's whoever holds that whatever it is that asset um, isn't just a face-to-face -face relationship it's what are you doing online how are you connected what what kind of company culture do you have and if the company culture doesn't align with what that person wants you're probably going to lose them yeah I mean, it's just it again it comes down to that relationships but we want more we want more than just the surface we want to be able to connect on a deeper level, regardless of what anybody says, that's what we want. And social media is a way for you to be able to do that. And it's also, it's also a way for lurkers to find out if you're the real deal, right? Um, I've had people come up to me at conferences and say, I follow you on social. And I'm like, like, I don't, I don't recognize them because I've never seen them like or comment on any of my content, right? <laughs> Like, oh, okay, that's great. Yay. You like, comment. Let me know who you are so I can figure out, like, I can see who you are, you know, like in real life. And, and we can have that connection. Um, the ones that I've had great connections with, we've talked in DMs. We, we comment on each other's posts. Um, and it's, it, you're right. It is like having, um, it is like just knowing who that person is. Like we met in real life at Beth's. Uh, Women's Real Estate Investment Summit in 2022. 23? 20... 23. 23. <laughs> I didn't yeah. think about that. So we met it there, and I was like, Avita, I know who you are. We, we chatted online, and we commented on each other's stuff, and and I already felt like I knew you, so... Yeah, I mean, that's how we connected was, like, I saw Movo, you know, and then it was like, okay, like, this is social media marketing, and... Commercial real estate, you know, and then you start checking it out, name to a face, DMs, and then meet in person, and it feels like we know each other. I think there's magic. I think that's what's like funny to me is like the hack and the magic is that you make a video or you post a piece of content online, and then you go to sleep, and the algorithm is working for you, mm -hmm. and people are interacting with you when you're sleeping. Yeah. And for somebody like me who needs eight hours of sleep and to shut off, you know, I'm not like Bob Knackle who goes to 251 networking events a year. I 260, can't. 261. 261. Okay. Well, <laughs> my social battery dropped a meter from that. No, um, <laughs> it networks for you and it's ex insanely powerful. And uh, that's just why I, I live and die by it because it's compound interest and as investment professionals we have to know and love compound interest yeah it it's um it can be magic and then of course there's also like we're not going to speak all roses sometimes it can be crappy um, <laughs> sure yeah. sometimes you can have a piece of content that goes sideways and in my own story um i I had asked Bob if I could share like his his stats, which is actually going back to a question you asked me before. Um, and he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. I was like, okay, cool. Like this is social proof. From my perspective, it's social proof, right? And I posted on Twitter and it freaking goes sideways. Like this one guy picked it up and he was like, oh, I can't believe Bob has a ghostwriter. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Bob doesn't have a ghostwriter. He's literally been on podcasts. I've said it. He writes all his own freaking content. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, Oof. Yeah. oh, I was hot. <laughs> I'm, I'm still hot. <laughs> and, and then another guy picked it up and lambasted me and was like, I don't think I should have to say this, that, you know, if you have clients, you shouldn't be sharing their stuff. And, just for clicks. And I was like, bitch, please, I am not doing that for that. This is social proof. This is what I'm doing. I want to show you the benefit of storytelling. And if you freaking read the post, it's exactly what it says. Got me teeth talking. And, <laughs> uh, and so it, it went, it, it absolutely went sideways. 
However, BK's awesome. Went, you know, went on his own. He's like, first of all, he's like, Mo doesn't ghostwrite for me. Like, that doesn't happen. I sit down on Sundays. I write my content. I send it to her. She posts it. She does my graphics. She does my podcast editing. Any podcast or video that I'm on, she's the one that's doing all the work. You know, we've never said anything other than that. And I was like, thank you, BK. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, however, on LinkedIn, same exact post. Totally nice. Everybody was, <laughs> everybody was very cool. There was there was no commentary about ghostwriters or anything like that. People go a little feral on some of these on some of the platforms. That was hot. <laughs> it is funny to see the um, temperaments of people on different platforms, and yeah, LinkedIn is a happy nine to five place where people are pretty chill. They're chill and they're supportive and and they're they're pretty cool, but um, so funny. Yeah. What's also funny to me about that is like, who are you to say what I can and can't post or what he can and can't post? I there's no rule book. Yeah, it was it was wild. I was not expecting that, and one of the people actually slid into my DMs and Bob's DMs at the same time. He did a a chat. And he's like, I'm going to apologize this weekend for, for saying what I said about both of you. And I was like, that would be much appreciated. Now ask me if it happened. <laughs> Did it happen? Well. Nope. I was like, so what that proved to me is that you are not trustworthy and you are not a man of your word. Hey, and if you don't, you know, if you lose that, what do you have? <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> So I could just pick your brain forever about this, but I don't have an attention span to listen to an hour long podcast. So I'm not going to. Same. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, this. Yes. Before I let you tell the listeners where they can mm -hmm. find you, follow you and become your friend online. Um, what makes you happy about what you do in Movo? media marketing and That's commercial real estate. I, what makes me happy is being able to connect with people. I really, I actually really do enjoy that and helping them tell their story. Um, there's so many people who don't think that they're interesting and they absolutely are. They just don't see it from the outside perspective. They're seeing it from, well, I'm just, I'm just this dude that sells industrial real estate in Timbuktu. Okay, but you're the only guy there who's selling real estate in Timbuktu. So let's tell your story. What are, what are some of the fun things that have happened? What are some of, you know, and you start pulling that out of them. You start talking to them about like, well, yeah, you know, I mentor so-and-so and I've mentored all these people. I'm like, really? Hmm. What kind of lessons can you teach? What are some of the lessons that you've learned? What are some tips that you can give to other people who are in the, who are just starting out in the industry? What are some of the mistakes you made? And then they just start rattling it off and they're like, oh, wow, I guess I do have a story. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. I know that's cheesy, but it is beautiful. And I agree. Just because we sell boxes doesn't mean we don't have outrageous, valuable stories to tell. I love your outrageous stories. Oi, oi, oi. And they just, we're just getting started here, Mo. We are just getting started. I, I'm i about to make a post. Um, this guy calls me from a pod. He hears me on somebody else's podcast. And long story short, I meet a guy in the mountains at a warehouse, which I don't do mountain. It's like a different world, mountain warehouse real estate. But I already had to go up the hill and I was going to be on my way. So I was going to meet him. He takes me to this warehouse. We go in the first unit. Okay, whatever. Industrial mining equipment. The second unit, crematorium. And I don't do dead things. I just stay away from, I don't do dead uses. I don't do dead animals. I'll eat them if they're good. But um, so he opens the door to the crematorium and he goes, and it was just me by myself, which is already sort of not what I should be doing. And he goes, do you want to come in? No. And it was just, like, nope. And uh, it was a funny story about the time I denied a, cl a potential client 
any desire to enter a building because that was creepy. Yep, so nope, thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying to quit. Mo no for the listeners. Allowed. Yeah, right. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, yeah. For the listeners, where can they find you, follow you, and contact you? They can find me at movomediamarketing.com. You can find me on the socials. I am on everything. Um, it's usually the Mo Regalado or the underscore Mo Regalado. Just look for Mo Regalado. You'll find me. Um, what else? What was the last thing? I, I lost it. Find you. Eighth. Follow find, you. Follow, find, follow. Movo. What's the Movo <laughs> handle? Movo it's, Media Marketing. Yeah, it's at it's at Movo Media Marketing on Instagram. It's different. I think it's at Movo Production on Twitter. I don't do a lot on my own personal Twitter for Movo, which is ridiculous. I should, but I work in it every single day, all the time. So, as it happens, marketers are usually the last to market for themselves. <laughs> Well, Mo, everybody go find Mo on Instagram. That's the, the <laughs> that's where you're going to find It is some, Mo. it's ratchet on Instagram. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. It's a little ratchet on Instagram. I have a very dark, like trauma inspired sense of humor. <laughs> Motif. E- e- every, everything's childhood trauma nowadays. So, um, you that's know. Cute. Well, Mo, <laughs> thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And for everybody listening, we'll see you next week cool thank you for tuning in to commercial real estate secrets if you have found our podcast to be valuable please be sure to subscribe rate and review on your favorite streaming platforms and make sure to follow us on social media at aviva real estate for brokerage services or to get in touch with us head over to the warehousehotline.com and submit a contact form my name is aviva this is commercial real estate secrets We'll see you next week.